I just thought I'd never want to do stand up because I don't like the idea of being on stage alone. Which is like, yeah, you do. Yeah. The first time somebody laughed at something, it was like they were agreeing with me, and it was like, I love this feeling. And since then, I've been hooked. Every time there's awkward silence, it's my mom saying that I was wrong. It's unbelievable how low the lows can be. But in the same way, uh, the highs, it's better than anything else I've ever done. <laughs> the only reason the FBI would kick my door down is to give me a fucking hug. <laughs> if I'm doing a show, I'll address the elephant in the room if there's like, you know, a heckler or something like that. Kill them. You know, I like to put them down like a three-legged horse. Stop! Stop it! Is this your first time outside ever? Have you ever been to a live performance ever in your life? You wouldn't talk during a fucking movie. Are you telling me you're going to show more respect to a piece of solenoid than you're going to do to a live person actually trying to entertain you? Is that what you're telling me right now? Is that what you're fucking telling me? Stop talking! Alright. I need drugs. I need drugs so bad, kids. I took a class at PSU called How to Be Funny with Valerie Lawrence. So she was teaching a sketch stand-up class and I thought I'd, I liked the idea of sketch so I took the class and then it turns out I really liked stand-up. Just leaves me there crying in the middle of a room like nothing just happened. Like she was just like, well I met my quota for touch of cooter today and walks out of my world. <laughs> the summer of 2011, I'd been in Portland for about 48 hours. I was in bad shape. I was drinking way too much and hanging out with the wrong people, like street kids kind of, or squatters, like the kids who you see in front of like Powell's with dogs who are wearing handkerchiefs and shit. So I just on a whim tried at the open mic at Helium and uh, got some laughs and it was, it, I don't even remember what I talked about, but I got a few laughs and it felt good enough. And afterwards someone came up to me and handed me a beer, They're like, you're really funny. I'm like, this is, this is so much better than any of that other shit. So I immediately started getting a job. I will be doing what I do best, dominating the space. <laughs> a lot of sociology majors in the building. Uh, when I actually had stuff prepared, like there were shitty jokes. I think they were terrible jokes. And then, like you don't even find that out till you actually start, most of the time, like doing it on stage and, and going through it and feeding off of uh, the people you're telling it to. I just blew my nose with it. Like, it's a cold game, baby. I'm sorry. And now I'm going to hell. A lot of stuff stems from something that happens. Yeah, I didn't get that joke either. And then, that's, that's pretty funny. Hey. I'm going to play Bulk Hunter after this. Completely lit. You think I can shit about what's happening up here? Uh, yeah, I do. Very much so. Uh, I've been doing stand-up comedy for nine years. I think I've come pretty far. I'm happier now. I'm not making as much money as when, like, I don't know, like four years ago when I was really touring hardcore and I just, I didn't have a home. Now, I know I can get on stage. I know I'm a performer. Um, it's, there's no doubt in anybody's mind at this point. They're like, no, Richie's a comic. So that's I'm 30. Is that adult? Kids, is that adult? 30? No? See, but adult shit's happening at 30. Like, pills stop being fun and start being useful. Like, that's a thing that happened. I think when I started out, I had an idea of what comedy should be and just like talk about all the wild shit I've been into. But uh, lately, I've just kind of been totally honest about the things I do do, which is like hang out with my girlfriend and like, you know, try to take care of my diabetes and shit. <laughs> I drink coffee every day and I just recently stopped drinking coffee every day. So I'm going to be about this energetic for the rest of my life. Just catching up. I don't know if it's maybe just getting your ass kicked for so long or getting rejected off of things that you really want, but then you start turning it more inward. Yeah, like after a while you start saying stuff that really comes from you. I know it's been a lot more enjoyable. I come bearing gifts. You like weed, black man? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really cool how far I've come in the sense that, like, I don't feel bad about the things that I say now. Like, I, I feel as honest as I've ever been on stage. And then from that, yeah, my process has changed because initially I was writing a monologue. Now. I kind of know what my voice is and what I want to do. Um, I carry around a scratch notebook that I have, and that has everything. It has like shopping lists and all sorts of other stuff in it. So just and then once the joke is good or it gets a laugh, I'm like, okay, I can work with this joke. 
and then I take it and I put it in another notebook, and that's the joke book. Like showing it off. I'm looking at the guard just trying to be a human. I'm like, hey, buddy, you and me right here. Right here. There's nothing on my butt. Okay, there's just nothing up there. I want to go in there, I want to serve my time, I want to come out, having nobody look up my butt. Can we do that? And he goes, it's the law. You have to do this. And I go, I'm in jail. I obviously don't give a shit about the law. It's kind of why I'm here. I like to do new jokes, but I'm always so worried about doing new jokes. Because it makes you feel not funny when the... Because <laughs> you're like, when a joke doesn't work, it sucks. But you can always make it better. It's always this process where you like you have a bunch of bad sets, then you finally write a joke that's really funny, and they're like, "All right, all right, I'm, I'm not giving up on this." I like getting my degree, but my grandma, she was really concerned what I'm gonna do with my life. She's like, "What are you gonna do with that, Iris? What are you gonna do?" I think it's obvious what I'm gonna do with theater arts through you guys. I'm gonna be the world's greatest waitress. <laughs> I get it now. I just get being on stage more. I understand how to use a microphone, how to get people to like me. So you just go up there like you are supposed to be there. I can't move. And then she's just like, yeah, I love myself. This, this is mine. No man zone. <laughs> Yeah, which I totally don't understand because this is totally a man zone. <laughs> Bad experiences stick out way more. One time, another comedian stood up and asked me if I was done, and I said yes. We got off stage. Um, that's the only time I've ever been addressed uh, aggressively, but mostly it's just people talking. There's a lot of people out there, uh, like you have hecklers. Like they don't give a shit about you or or anything like that. Shut the fuck up, you old bitch. So like you have to like take what's yours. You know what I mean? Like I I earn the right to be on the stage. Like you need to listen. Dad died when I was really little. I don't know a whole lot about him. I kind of handle hecklers the way I want to handle hecklers, and so far it hasn't been an issue. Yeah, and that's why he shot himself. Shut up! Shut your mouth! I unleash on them, and it's the best way to do it. See, that's what happens! There's subtlety and nuance and jokes, and when you fuck it up, I can't tell them! Ah! Alright. You go there because they want you there. And the fact that you're there and they're being rude to you, just, oh, I can't handle that. Oh, I cannot handle that. I like to make sure they go away and they understand that they're doing something inappropriate. Jesus Christ, but... lady. <laughs> I tried to kill myself once. I took a whole bottle of pills, but they were multivitamins, so <laughs> Just woke up and started fighting crime. All right. <laughs> Felt good. And there's so much more to it than I thought. Originally thought it's a big impact on like the way we think now. You get to say what you you wished you could say, and a lot of other people wish they could say uh, all the time, on a nightly basis, and like it's helping people out. Like I, I don't see how you could just give it up. So I pissed the bed a little while ago, and, uh... <laughs> it's weird. I don't, I don't see myself quitting comedy. See myself dying, but I don't ever see it. See me quitting comedy. I've gone through all these different phases and gotten into different things, and, uh, and comedy is the only thing that I've loved forever. I would like to continue to do it forever. I think uh, if it's just you alone listening to a Bill Hicks record, some dark marginal figure, um, and that's what you need to get you through the day, then that, that's what comedy is for. Um, but if you've had a shitty day at work and you just want to like, you know, take the edge off, yeah, comedy's there for that too. So. Give it up for me right now. Can we do that? I didn't do it like when I was in college. I didn't do it for like a month, and I was so miserable. And then I went up after a month. I did a set and I bombed really hard, but I'd never been so happy. Right, <laughs> I'm gonna do this forever. What else is there to do? <laughs> I don't know what else to do. <laughs>